Today's Nebraska Wesleyan University Sports Network telecast is made possible by Lincoln Electric System. It's your electricity, own it. Union Bank, you belong here. And Nebraska Wesleyan University. Back at Abel Stadium here on homecoming, Nebraska Wesleyan leading 17 to 14 over Concordia. Let's head down to the field. Let's check in with Corey Ross. He's standing by with head coach Brian Keller. Thanks, fellas. Hey, coach, looking really good this, this first half. How does it feel? What's the adjustment going in with the lead for the first time this year at halftime? Gosh, I hadn't realized that was the case there. <laughs> yeah, put the pressure on me right here. No, uh, you know, mainly it's how are we going to respond the second half. Obviously, they're going to make some adjustments, as you well know, and how well are we going to respond to those adjustments and keep that uh, intensity going and that. I mean, we've got the momentum. we got to keep going and doing what we're doing and play physical. I think we've done a good job with that today. you got to be pretty happy. No turnover was on offense, one penalty, and, and I mean, the guys are just playing great. Got to be happy with that. What do you expect to do on defense and, and, and some big plays that happen early or later in the second quarter? What do you do want to do defensively to stop those guys? Well, we got to cover better. I mean, it's plain and simple. We let some guys run free, and uh, it's man-to-man, -man and you just can't let your guy go and or, you know, biting on some play fakes and that. So they'll clean that up right there. Uh, that's a little bit more like Wesleyan football there, uh, not hurting ourselves, not shooting ourselves in the foot, and hopefully we can continue that. Right, good luck, Coach. Thanks, Corey. Appreciate Thank you. Hey, you guys got it, Coach Keller and the Wesleyan guys having the lead right now, headed into this second half. Let's hope for an exciting ending. There you go. Back to you, fellas. Corey, thanks a lot. And, uh, yeah, let's hope for an exciting ending here because right now Wesleyan only up by three, 17 to 17-14. The offense looked very good in the first half. The ground game much better. The passing game has been there, too. There you see the stats. 17 first downs for Wesleyan to Concordia's 10. Passing-wise, it is even. Look at the passing. It's fairly even. And then the total yards overall, I mean, a slight advantage for Nebraska Wesleyan. And, and really, that's how things shape up as far as how things have been so balanced. Well, and, and this, the 14 rushes for only 39 yards for that Nebraska Wesley has held Concordia to. That, that's a key stat because Concordia, I mean, they're a run-first team, not a pass-first team. Now, they can put the numbers up through the air, but they would just as soon ground and pound you all day long. They average 225 yards on the ground every game. So then Nebraska Wesleyan defense doing a nice job keeping Collins, who averages 100 yards a game. And then, of course, Vaughn Thomas, he can get free for about 70 a game as well. So here is the opening kick from Kramer Rath. And Collins picks it up in the end zone. He'll return it. As he breaks out toward the 25, dodges a tackle, tries to cut back in, and now we got flags thrown. And finally, Collins stopped on the return just across the 35. Flag back at about the 31 yard line, probably going to bring this nice return by Collins back as they talk it over Take here. Returned by number nine, Bryce Collins, tackled by Garrett Farr. We do have a protocol, protocol violation. There's a flag on the field. There you see, as we talked about, it's the first time that... During the return, block in the back on the receiving team, number six, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. First time this season the Nebraska Wesleyans had the lead in the first half at the halftime portion of the game. But still, quite an accomplishment. Well, even in their win up in Briarcliff, they trailed at half, came back and won the second half of that one. But... Be a nice feeling finally to go into the locker room and you have to make a few tweaks here and there, but not completely overhaul what you're doing and have a lead at the half. Although Concordia stole a little bit of the momentum, scoring that touchdown right before the break. Draw play as Thomas fakes the handoff to Collins. He takes it ahead and. It's about three on the play, maybe four. You know, and we didn't see Von Thomas keep the football very often in that first half no. out of those zone reads. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we see him keep a couple early here. And that way, Nebraska Wesleyan has to, you know, make sure that they're keeping track of him via the ground as well, as he only had 11 yards. And around right side they go. That's Harrison who gets the carry, gets the first down. He's forced out of bounds. One thing we want to point out, 
Lucas, is that Seth Wardeen is back in the game. And, again, for disciplinary reasons, he did not play in the first half. So they got him not necessarily playing the well, linebacker spot. No, they I said this, this weekend or this week that more than likely if he did come back here in the second half as he is, they're going to have him at a corner or a safety spot. So, And that's really where he started the season, and then they moved him down to the backer and now back to that safety or corner spot, and they go right after him. This time the catch is made by Garcia for a first down at the 41 of Concordia. And it was Seth Wardeen who had the coverage. He's hit on the play by number 43, Seth Wardeen. That's been where they go. They've been going at Garcia's side. And that's not an easy task for Garcia there either, or for Garcia to come out and go up against Wardeen. Wardeen's six foot 205, so a little more physical on physical there. And it's Collins who gets the handoff. Looks like Lawrence was over there on the tackle for Wesleyan. Brandon Collins. McGill was over there too. Well, on that time, Max the defensive front of Nebraska Wesleyan did a good job just shutting that down right away. There was absolutely zero push by that offensive line of Concordia. They were, if anything, knocked on their heels by that front four. Second and a long seven. And now Thomas looking downfield, and it's going to go incomplete. Flag thrown, and Eric Richards is going to be called for pass interference as Logan Audi was the intended target. And, and I, I know that maybe Nebraska Wesleyan fans are not a huge fan of that penalty, but watch here's again. why. He never, ever turned to find the football, and that's why the flag came out. If you don't turn and look, at least make an effort, you're going to get that call. Pass interference number 15 of the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. I really think, Jeff, if he just simply he turns his head around there, that, that, that flag does not get thrown. But you got to make an effort to find the football to make a play. If you don't, then you know, they're going to flag you on that. So the ball at the 42 of Nebraska Wesleyan where it's first and 10. And Concordia on the move. And a handoff. Good acceleration there by Collins after he Collins with the found the crease. He kind of waited in the He's backfield and then was able to take it up beard. almost. And they'll say it is for 11 yards on first down. And just when you thought for a moment that Concordia was going to be very slow offensively, you go back to the latter half of the second quarter until now. And they've kept that momentum going. And now Collins on the handoff, so he kind of cuts around right side, finally stopped around the 25-yard line on Collins that play. Well, and it's he's a tough runner. Riley Shoemaker and Eric Richards. Eric Richards and Shoemaker there on the tackle, but go continue the thought. Yeah, Lucas. I mean, and he, what's impressive is his patience back there. I mean, he had to bump that to the outside and then waited, waited, found a crease, and then what leg drive. I mean, he made something out of nothing. He got almost seven yards there on first down. Near side toss. Wardeen and a tip drill, and he knocks the ball away incomplete. Looking for Garcia again, and oh, Seth Wardeen with a good defensive coverage downfield. Yeah, really almost made Garcia become the defensive back. And maybe I like to see a little bit more. Garcia does, comes back to that, does a good job of knocking it down, but almost seemed like Garcia could have got to that ball if he really, really wanted to. I mean, it just. Yeah, it was it was underthrown, but at 6-3, that height there, that wingspan, it looked like maybe he could have made that catch. Good coverage by Wardeen, and basically his task here, he's been going everywhere Garcia is. Now Collins gets the handoff. He may be close to a first down. He's tackled short of the first down. Wes Betcher maybe had a hand in on that play for right, Wesleyan. He went right between Lawrence and He's Latimer that team. time. West and it's going to be fourth and short. And the offensive line of Concordia is waving. They want to go. Uh, you're close. Or do you want to be the conservative role and maybe settle for a field goal On the ten. road, your kicker's been pretty decent. They're going to go for it. I mean, it's fourth in a matter of inches here. Pistol formation with that single wing in the backfield. And it's Collins who's going to get the carry. And he might have been denied. And they're going to stop him. 
Yeah, and the Westland defense comes through, led by Hunter Hand that time. That's the thing about that pistol formation that on a fourth down play like that that I I don't like. You you go back three yards before you even get moving and any penetration at all, and that time Nebraska Westland defense had it, and you're going to be stuffed short. And that's the risk that you run every time you go for it in a situation like that. At the same time, I understand why teams like Concordia, who run primarily pistol the whole time, don't come up under center. That's that's almost as awkward as you know taking it. But yeah, you give you give them a free three yards basically, and you got to make that ground up. Here's Weedle, and he breaks free, gets the first down, and he is stopped at the 38-yard line again. The Wesleyan ground game much better today. Well, just the threat of a ground game. Good job here. A little move there, breaks one tackle, and then a little stutter step at the end to pick up another three, four yards. When the backs get in some open space, there's some quality guys back there, but they just haven't had any room to run all season long. And that offensive line's done a very good job today, creating those open paths. Two receivers each side. Weedle going to get the carry again. That time he is wrapped up and stopped. Tackle made by Nakeem Evans. And he's one of those guys we mentioned. He's, wrapped up by he's the leading Nikim tackler Evans. for this Bulldog squad. About a pickup of a yard on that play for Weedle. want to tell you, too, you know, Connor Zumpf, fifth straight game, over 100 receiving yards. He accumulated that in the first half at 105 yards on six catches. So that's five in a row for Zumpf. Here's Weedle on the handoff. Tries to cut back in. That time could not get through, and he is going to be stopped for no gain. Good job by the defensive front of Concordia that time to string that along. Michael Gill out there. And then Evans flowing up from that linebacker spot. So a third and nine. You know, we haven't seen a t our called Evans name a ton today, but some of that's because they've had to go to a, an extra DB now and then because of all the receivers and the passing of Francis. Fr Francis out of the gun, looking to throw. Near side, trying to dive for the ball. Goes incomplete. Connor Zump, the intended target, and Roby went on the coverage for Concordia. So a three and out here for Wesleyan. It was a rare underthrown football by Tyler Francis, but that time he didn't even really look at his progressions. He had a pretty good feeling he was going towards Connor Zump the entire time. First half, by the way, Lucas, Tyler Francis, 14 of 20 passes completed for 206 yards. Yeah, both quarterbacks had a pretty good first half throwing the football, minus the interception from Thomas. Gelb with the punt. And Odie on the return. Rather, Odie on the return as he takes it to the 31-yard line, and that's where Concordia will take over on their next drive, just under nine minutes to go here in this third quarter. Matt Keener returns Andrew Gelb's punt. Tackled by kind of that West bend Bechard. don't break on that first drive from the Wesleyan defense. They were able to turn him away on fourth down, but you could see maybe that Concordia ground game get rolling a little bit on that opening drive. And they had that on the drive before the interception. Their ground game was working. And then they went for the deep ball, and Thomas was intercepted. Let's see if they continue to ground and pound here. So Thomas rolling right. Pass is going to go incomplete. And it was right on target, even though it was a kind of a low throw, but it was close. Yeah, Audie settled Audie into that incomplete. zone there. Brings up, up second and ten. So Audie, the guy that was the intended target. I'm waiting for one of these times. It's, I mean, they're just rollouts, but there's so much room over there. I'm just waiting for Thomas to take off. I mean, he has that ability to just make people miss in the open field, and we haven't seen it really yet today. Second and ten. Now Vaughn Thomas will get the low snap, and he'll keep it on a draw play. And Brandon McGill gets to him, makes the tackle around the 41-yard line, about a yard short of the first down. That was a design quarterback run all the way. 
Ron Thomas darts up Thomas the middle. out of Miami, He's Florida. By number 40, Brandon he McGill. didn't play football for one year out of high school. He was recruited by a lot of Division I schools. They wanted him to play wide receiver. He never played wide receiver in high school. He wasn't comfortable with that. Decided to come back home, lived with his mom, worked, and then somehow got hooked up here again. Good catch that time. What a catch that was on that long rollout, and Fitzke makes the catch for the first down for well, Concordia. Pass complete to Seth Fitzke, coverage on the play by West And Harrison. you can just tell, Lucas, how, how pass-oriented both teams are. Yeah, this afternoon it's been that way, and I, that's the – the scary part about Concordia is that they've been able to do it, and you would think that, oh, this is a pass-first team. But if you look at the numbers, really they would rather run the ball first. But they've, you know, over 230 yards passing here this afternoon. Thomas going to air it out again far side. Wardeen had deep coverage on the intended target. That was Garcia. And, boy, Seth Wardeen has done a good job here Garcia since, again, this is the first time he's played in this game Seth today. Wardeen. Well, and he's kind of got – Thrown into the fire. I mean, he's an experienced Prairie Wolf, obviously, but he's got thrown into the fire as he's been tasked with shutting down Garcia. He's done a nice job here in this second half. Well, Garrett Farr came in and played in that spot in the first half. Well, they caught Farr a couple times looking in the backfield on some play action type passes, and that's something that Wardeen's susceptible to, too. He's used to playing that safety or linebacker spot, so he. That's kind of why they moved him down there because they caught him looking in the backfield. So let's see if they try and take advantage of that on maybe some double moves. So a timeout on the field taken by Concordia. Still a 17-14 lead for Wesleyan. Hi, I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy, and I wanted to share a hot tip about keeping warm in the wintertime. Instead of turning up your thermostat, turn on a portable space heater. After all, why heat your whole house when you only want the room you're in to be warm and toasty? Oh, that, that's too, too toasty. Uh, don't, don't touch that, Gracie. For more energy-saving tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. <clears throat> we'll uh, see you next time. Lincoln. Good sense, Deli Fresh up. Second and ten coming up here on this next play out of the timeout. Want to mention the homecoming king and queen for Nebraska Wesleyan, Kelsey Earhart, a native of Osceola, Nebraska. And Brendan Love was named the king. He's from Lincoln. So congratulations to both Kelsey Earhart, the queen, and Brendan Love of Lincoln, the king, of this year's homecoming at Nebraska Wesleyan. Cornea took that time out, get on the same page offensively here. Big drive, trying to get back on top or at least tie this up. Pressure on, Hunter Hand in pursuit. Pass going to be complete on the far side. Reception made by Audie again, and a flag coming out. And that thing was tossed high in the air. <laughs> Good hang time on the flag, and I'm guessing it's going to be a late hit. That's about all it could be. Take a look here as Thomas escapes the pressure. The blitz came. Adi able to shoelace the sideline. Late hit, number Betcher. 10, defense. That'll be a 15-yard add-on. First down, Concordia. So Wes Betcher called for the late hit. And the football going to be placed inside the Wesleyan 20 at the 18-yard line. So that doesn't bode well for Wesleyan. Take a look at this again. Well, I guess they thought that he was out of bounds, established, and the little extra shove. Collins up the gut here. How about Bryce Collins with the carry? Takes it down to the 11. You know, he's shown he can do it a variety of ways, Jeff. I mean, a patient runner, burst of he's speed there, just straight power. A tough back for Concordia. You know, he, he's listed at 5'9", 205. He looks like he could be a fullback. Yeah. His stature is just big. and, and But he's, he's deceptively quick, too. I mean... He's sneaky quick, I guess, if you want to say. I mean, he's shown moments where he can turn it on when he gets in that open field. And that was a tough seven-yard run there to almost eight. Jared Leifeld is reverse. in there, too. Here's a reverse. Adi gets it. 
five into the end zone. Touchdown, oh, flag thrown. Back. And that will likely come back. That's going to be a holding or a block in the back against Concordia. That looks like Adam Ashenbrenner, who is called for the holder, the block in the back. He was asking, what can I do different? Holding Take a look. Number four, Concordia. Oh, they say number four. The 10-yard penalty. We play second down. So Ashen Brenner, the senior out of Malcolm for Concordia. Well, they said that was on number four. So Harrison, the wide receiver, take a look right there. Okay, there it is. Say he held the, on just a little too long, but changed it was, the direction. It, it was Ashen Brenner who reacted. That's right. He was. He, I think they thought they got him for something, and so the reverse, a, a good play, a good call, play. Yeah, no really doubt. Caught Nebraska Wesley, and it was blocked pretty well off guard a little bit, but now instead of first or a touchdown, you're back at second and five. Now we got movement on the offensive line. And Concordia did this on their last drive of the first half. And it's Fitzke who moved on the line on the left side, the tight end. Let's start number 49 offense, five yard penalty, still second down. So just as Concordia gets more momentum downfield, just simple mistakes being committed and that's not helping them at all. So now they move it back to the line of scrimmage. It's at the 18 of Wesleyan. Well, the, the good part for the Concordia Bulldogs is they can still get a first down. At least it wasn't first and goal at the nine, and then they got backed up, so you'd be at first and goal all the way out here. You can get a first down here. So it's still second and ten, but, yeah, you take points off the board. That always hurts. Thomas's pass is tipped up. Audie makes the catch. And they'll give him the forward progress inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Good job by Adi to stick with that one. Right at the line of scrimmage. I think that was Latimer maybe who got the hand on it. Take a look here. Nope, it looked like that time it was Lawrence. 6-14 and counting third quarter. Quick moving third quarter here, Jeff. Third and five. Thomas, pump fakes, in pursuit, he's scrambling. He's gonna have to heave it downfield, it's up in the air and it goes way out of bounds, incomplete. Yeah, that was a heady play though by Thomas there just to put it out of the back of the end zone. And now here comes the field goal unit. And you don't wanna take a sack and put yourself out of field goal range. That was something maybe two years ago when we saw Vaughn Thomas, he would have tried to squeeze it in somewhere or tried to take off and run. There was no one open. Good coverage by Nebraska Wesleyan. Realizes I need to stop and unload. Throws it out of the back of the end zone, so Myros has a chance here. Adam Myros from 30 yards. Here's the snap and the hold. The kick is up. Got distance, and it is good, and we are tied. But 5.57 to go in this third quarter. We are tied at 17 here on homecoming at Nebraska Wesleyan. Back in a moment. My first exposure to agriculture was my grandpa's farm. I just had a passion for it from the beginning. The hard work wasn't just talked about when we were growing up. It was done. The animals had to be taken care of. There's a pride in being able to say, those are our livestock. We know we're young, but Union Bank has given us a chance. We want to leave our son in the legacy of family working together and working hard. Anything can be a lot of work, but when you find a passion, it's not near as hard. Staff will ensure your experience will be memorable. Back at Able Stadium here at Homecoming, Jeff Motes, Lucas Mormon, Corey Ross, our entire Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network crew with you today on a gorgeous afternoon in Lincoln. For October 11th, you can't go wrong for a spectacular day like this for football. And a good GPAC rival. Yeah. Rivalry type game. And I mean, no, the big rivalry game was last week at 100th meeting between Doan and Nebraska Wesleyan. But I mean, don't kid yourself. There's no love lost between these two schools either, just 20 minutes apart down Highway 34. And then you go down further, you got the other school that we were at last week, and we're referring to Doan. So three GPAC schools relatively close to each other. Doan's locked in a battle this afternoon with Dakota Wesley in there. Just trailing 7-6 to six midway through the second quarter. Schneider going to take an E in the end zone. And Wesleyan will have it automatically as they move the uh, yard markers up. In the end zone and the will 
will start off after the touchback. So 17 all. Ball at the 25 here for Wesleyan. And Wesleyan has allowed zero sacks today after allowing 11 in the last two games. Another key stat. Well, and Concordia's got after some quarterbacks. They've had a decent amount of sacks on the year. Unable to do it so far, but a lot of that's that running game keeping them honest a little bit. Francis going to spread it out. And Earhart in motion. Francis near side, it's complete to Weedle at the 30, to the 40, and he is tripped up by Roby. And a first down for Weedle. How many times has Tyler Francis sent Weedle out of the backfield as a receiver today? Quite a bit. Weedle or Jones, all of them either lining up in the backfield or as a split end. They have an advantage on these Concordia linebackers. Time just soft coverage, just dump it off, let them go to work. 20 yards for Weedle. He's having a nice game receiving the football. Six catches, 65 yards. Kloss in the tight end lines up on the left side. A work out of that classic eye, and Weedle gets the carry. He gets about three on the play to the 40. Well, they'll mark him two to the 47. Weedle, over 100 yards of total offense, has 47 yards. Let's call it 49 now, rushing the football. And that's something we just hadn't seen, this balanced attack. And it's still obviously pass heavy as they've thrown for 200 and almost 230 yards. But you say you don't need an amazing running attack, just one that's enough to be a threat. Now Weedle in motion. Francis. Now here comes some pressure. Rolling to his right, ball thrown upfield. It is caught by Connor Zuff. He bobbled it, regrouped, stayed with it. Caught the ball at the 39 of Concordia on a first down. Tyler Francis showing a little bit of mobility. You know, he moves the pocket well, but this time he had to roll the pocket completely as he had to roll away from the pressure, and he was able to find Zumpf, who broke off his route and came back. 16th completion, that one for 15 yards. Davis and Zumpf are the receivers on the left side. On the top of your screen, and Weedle with another handoff. So he tried to leap through the defense of Concordia. Picks up about two yards on the play to the 36. But Sam Noonan, the freshman on that defensive ball. line He's in there. Down by 48, Sam Noonan. Sam Noonan is a freshman from Eagle. Played high school ball at Waverly. His dad, former Husker Danny Noonan. And Danny Noonan's roots are right here in Northeast Lincoln. He played his high school ball at Northeast. Second and eight. Francis to the far side, and Zumpf again with another leaping catch. And they're going to mark him complete, just shy of the 30, at about the 31. Not sure the Concordia staff liked to call over there. Thought maybe he was out of bounds. Goes up. Gretz that back foot down. Yep. Brings up third Good catch by Connor Zumpf. You look at Connor Zumpf, you know, came a basketball player, and now they're going to try and tempo them. They see something they like again, that little pitch play. Pitch play to Weedle. Weedle's going to be stopped. Ball might have came out. And now this could be a fumble and maybe have been recovered by Concordia. No Weedle signal the either way yet. And now we got flags thrown, and there is some pushing as Clausen got Here's pushed down to the turf. The Tate Sybil but got a forearm flags. shiver on Clausen. Landon Olke was the guy that, Push Clausen down, but we got penalty flags on the field. And if Wesleyan holds on to the ball. And they do say it's Wesleyan football. This is going to be a costly penalty against Concordia. Would have been fourth down, but that penalty will give him a give him a first down. Take a look here. Football looks like it's out there, right? Towards the center of your screen. Battle for it. And then it was Olke. Let's listen in. Personal foul, 25 Concordia. That's a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. So that was costly. The extracurricular activity that time from Olke. And now the football for Wesleyan will be put at the 15 yard line of Concordia with three and a half to go here in the third quarter. 
Francis. Handoff, it goes to level a fullback. And he gets about a pickup of four down to the 11-yard line of Concordia. And, you know, that's a play that the last two weeks we probably wouldn't have seen because early middle. in the game the, the run Michael game was Gill. so non-existent that they almost abandoned it. It would have been a pass play there, but you have a little bit of success, and then that opens things up down here in the red zone. Try and pick up four or five yards on first down via the rush. Second and six. Let's see where Connor Zampu lines up and has the tough task down here. He's a touchdown machine. Francis to the near side to Schneider. They're going to say no, incomplete. Roby with coverage. Schneider was out of bounds when he made the catch. Good play Ryan design Schneider there, though. Put three receivers over on that left side and go one on one down there against the freshman. Yep, he was out of bounds. Good try, though. Concentration to hang on to the football. But. Third and six. Far in the bottom of your screen, that's Connor Zumpf. Low snap for Francis. Screen toss. It's going to be caught by Weedle. Weedle trying to work to the outside. He has spun around and thrown down by Olke. And now fourth down for the Prairie Wolves and Francis Kramer Rath and the kicking unit coming and out. I love the play Matt call, Peter though. They've had success with that play. And, and Weedle kind of hides in behind the land of the Giants there. And that time, though, unable to squirt free. So Kramer Rath will attempt the uh, field goal from the 19-yard line. It's a 29-yard attempt from that left, but we left saw hash last mark. last week that even 29-yard attempts aren't safe. Kicks were blocked all over the Snap field. of the hole. The kick is up. It's low driving to go through. Yes, it does. It is good. And the 29-yarder goes through for Kramer Rath. And Nebraska Wesleyan, with under two minutes to go in the third quarter, takes a 20-17 lead on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. You should pick Wesleyan because... It's a school that whatever you want to be in life, you can certainly do it. I wanted a small school small campus where I could be one-on-one -on -one with my professors. It's just like one big family, not to mention the, the kind of education she gets is wonderful. I didn't apply to any of the schools. I know Wesleyan was the one that I wanted to come to. We want you to come join us and be part of the Prairie Wolf family and be a part of the tradition of success. That's one way to get a good workout in. <laughs> Any way you can to get some exercise in, huh? 20 to 17, Nebraska Wesleyan leads it here with a minute 57 to go here in this third quarter. <laughs> and so Kramer Rath will kick away. And over and kick. Picked up at about the goal line. And on the return, short lib return that time, it was Garrett Fulkert. Got the pick up and returns it to the 21. By number 18, James Ferguson. Tackled by Brooks Earhart. So Con Concordia with the football. Clock with a minute 49 to go here in the third. Here's the handoff, and it is a big stop. Brandon McGill on Collins with the tackle. Bryce Collins carries the ball. He's swallowed up by number 40, Brandon McGill. So McGill with the tackle. Second and eight. And Thomas working out of the gun. He'll look over to the far side, goes incomplete. Seth Wardeen going to be whistled for pass interference onto Audie. 
who is the intended the receiver. Well, Wardeen's been caught a couple you times. Have a flag on the field. The, the first time, well, it was Richards actually who got caught. On the defense, number 43, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You, you don't really notice it maybe so much there, but I think it was that that left arm, maybe the forearm in the back. It's hard to tell at that angle, but Richards got called because he didn't look for the football. Wardeen was making a play that time, but Concordia on the fortunate side of those two. But this Concordia offense, you know, it's went down the field, Jeff, but then it's kind of stalled right around that 20. Self-inflicted wounds, some costly penalties, some holds, some false starts. Thomas going to take off. It's out of a tackle that time for Marion Bainey. Actually, Betcher was the guy that helped make the stop. Number 10, Von Coy Ross Garrett. is on our sideline. We'll chat with him here in just a moment. Maybe get his thoughts on that pass interference call against Seth Wardeen. And just thought Nebraska Wesley and really able to keep Thomas in check. He's hurt him through the air, but they've been able to keep him in check on the ground where he's usually good for one or two big gainers throughout the day. 10 to snap it here. Thomas down the middle of the field. It's going to be caught by Garcia, oh, and he drops the, the ball. How about the placement of that ball? And Betcher was in on the coverage that time. And that was pretty good coverage from the Wesleyan secondary. And Thomas had time, delivers a perfect strike. And just got to get both hands on it. He gets one hand on it. Probably would have been off to the races for six. Instead, it's third and seven. 25 seconds on the clock here in this third quarter. Still some time here for Concordia to maybe move the ball down further toward the west lane half of the field. Two to snap it, though. They're not going to get the playoff. And what do we got here? Timeout. Timeout, Concordia. Timeout in the field. Let's take a quick break. Come back to Able Stadium with more in just a moment. What excites me is being able to build something that isn't there. We're not about following the norm. We're about creating. New concepts, they're always in the back of my head. The burger place that everybody wants it to be. It just went crazy. But it wasn't at a point that we knew it could fully support a new adventure. Sebastian's Table is everything I love about food. So Union Bank willing to take on a restaurant and give us a chance. We know there's always somebody there who will back us if we want to do something new. We don't want to slow down. We're ready to keep rolling. 23 seconds to go here in this third quarter. Supporting the Prairie Wolves and the Kansas City Royals. That's, that's someone I can get behind right there. <laughs> Well, the Royals are playing this afternoon. Boy, how about that game last night with Alex Gordon and that home run? Making Lincoln proud. Third and eight from the 40. Concordia in control of the football. This is a big third down. Concordia unable to punch one in the last couple trips down. They need to keep this drive going here. I mean, there's a lot of time yet, a whole quarter of action, but momentum starting to swing back Nebraska Wesleyan's way. Prairie Wolves looking to blitz. Hunter Hand on his heels. Thomas. McGill couldn't get to him. Jennings tried to get to him. Ball going to be complete on the pass from Thomas to Audie. And it's short of the first down, though. That was wizard. Action back there by he eluded Thomas. Wow, he eluded three tackles right there. It looked like Hunter Hand was going to have him to rights, and then gets rid of it. And creditors receivers, too, for staying with it. And they mark him about a football shy. Third quarter over with time runs out. Score, and your score is Nebraska Wesleyan 20, Concordia 17 on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Hi, I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy, and I wanted to share a hot tip about keeping warm in the wintertime. 
Instead of turning up your thermostat, turn on a portable space heater. After all, why heat your whole house when you only want the room you're in to be warm and toasty? Oh, that, that's too, too toasty. Uh, don't, don't touch that, Gracie. For more energy-saving tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. <clears throat> we'll uh, see you next time. Start of the fourth quarter, Nebraska Wesleyan 20, Concordia 17. Corey Ross is down in our sidelines right below. And Corey, uh, going back to that one pass interference call with Seth Wardine, it looked like he turned around and got side of the ball. Was that the case? I mean, did it look like pass interference? It looked it looked like um, I, I've, I felt and a lot of the, a lot of the coaches on, on the sideline felt like it, it was pretty good coverage. I don't know what you guys saw up top, but uh, they say Wardine is probably one of their best athletes uh, on this football team. And so obviously they needed to make a change with that second half, some big throws and big receivers. So he's actually doing a pretty good job on their star, their star freshman receiver. So uh, we'll see what happens here in this fourth quarter. These guys are excited. I've never seen this much energy. They're trying to get this first home game victory. So it's fun. It's exciting to watch. All right, Corey, thanks a lot. But, you know, the athleticism part, he's right. You know, the, the one thing about Seth Wardine, he is very athletic. I don't know, are you surprised they didn't go for that there, Jeff? I thought maybe. I mean, they've been stopped once already on fourth down, and that might be in the back of the head of Coach uh, Vance Winter that, hey, we don't need to give them the ball at the midfield stripe, I guess. But I was kind of surprised. Only about a football and a half to go, but they decided they, they respect that front with Phil Latimer, I think, and they'll get, put it back on their defense. So Francis will hand it off. And it's a short gain up the middle Austin with the for Austin Ruskamp. By Michael Gill. It'll be interesting to see how how much they go to this ground attack that they've kind of found today. Some success rushing the football if they try and move the sticks on the ground. If they go back to the air here, you know, content to run some clock when you're up 2017 and a little bit of a lead going into the fourth quarter. Now Jones in motion to the backfield. Russ Camp makes the catch around the 25. That's where he's going to be forced out of bounds. Francis pass is complete to Austin Russ Camp. Well, that time they did a good job of picking Jones Tackled up out Landon of the backfield, but then the other way you got Russ Camp in that slot and he finds a way to get open. Third and manageable here now. Third and two. Francis out of the gun. He'll run the option. And Jones keeps it, and it's going to be a late, well, no flag thrown, but there was a little bit of momentum out of bounds as Old Key and Jones are up and moving. Where, did, where is the spot is the more important question. Brought down by Landon Olke. So they're going to move the yard markers. It is a first down. So you got it by about a half a yard. We've seen that little that pitch on, not necessarily even or not, that time down. it was an option, but just and the quick pitch play that we've seen first a couple times. Need one more to meet today's Canes challenge. What do we got here? Timeout taken by Wesleyan. Prairie Wolves, timeout, call timeout Nebraska to do Wesleyan. some scrutinizing. 13-22 to go in the ball game. Wesleyan holding on to a three-point lead at 20 to 17. You should pick Wesleyan because it's a school that whatever you want to be in life, you can certainly do it. I wanted a small school, small campus where I could be one-on-one -on -one with my professors. It's just like one big family. Not to mention the, the kind of education she gets is wonderful. I didn't apply to any of the schools. I know Wesleyan was the one that I wanted to come to. We want you to come join us and be part of the Prairie Wolf family and be a part of the tradition of success. Well, at least one guy who 
felt the need to maybe come over here and stand up against along the fence on 56th Street to check out this game. That and a couple of casual tailgaters across the way. <laughs> Jeff and I are worried maybe someone's well, burning their house down. There, there's there. a house. There's a house <laughs> across the street. If one of our camera guys can kind of pan over, there's a house on the north side of Baldwin, right off 56th Street, right on the corner, and there was some smoke billowing out from the front of the house. We thought for a moment that the house was on fire, but it looks like they're grilling. But <laughs> they got the grill pretty close to the house, though. <laughs> All's well. It's just tailgate action. Yeah, we were waiting to see if Lincoln's Bravest were going to be pulling up here before too long. Pass from Francis intended for Davis goes out of bounds incomplete. Francis pass intended for Maybe Davis, Davis and Francis, yep, and you see Francis, uh, you he was kind of pointing to Davis. You take that one out a little ticket. bit further. They were so uh, not on the same page. So you, can check numbers. you know, speaking uh, of tailgaters, this next play. toward the south turn of the track in the south parking lot, looks like Concordia fans or somebody down there has got a big tailgate going on. Joey Jones wrapped up and stopped behind the line of scrimmage back at the 26. Joey Jones with the carry. He's brought down by... You know, on a day like this, why not? Here is oh, I mean, it is I, so I feel beautiful. like we talk about it every time we're here doing a game, Jeff, but I tell you what, the last two seasons, we've got just absolutely beautiful weather out here for... Nebraska Wesley and home football and and on the road last week in like Crete. The money, I know our camera dollars. operators and whole crew appreciates Mother Nature cooperating that yeah. much is for sure. I mean, they're out in the elements. Every Big time we do here. it. Francis to Weedle, it goes incomplete. Again, though, Weedle, Weedle matched up on Evans, the linebacker there. That's a, a good matchup for Nebraska Wesley, and if they could have hooked up, then he had a step. But instead, Concordia will get it back. So the Prairie Wolves will have to punt. And one of the rare times they've had to do that today. We've seen Gelb just a few times. This one kind of a knuckleballer. Bounces at the 40, going to uh -huh. bounce down even further. And it's going to be marked down around the 18-yard line of Concordia. And that punt rolled as far as it went in the air. I mean, that was a good punt from Andrew Gell. There you see those tailgaters. I mean, you got a great view. And you're still in some shade at the same time. And you could just feel it. We mentioned earlier with homecoming here, I mean, there were a few less parking spots already at 11 o'clock, when <laughs> 10.30 when we rolled in. And just there was a buzz around campus. Just yeah. there were people out enjoying campus, probably that are back for the homecoming festivities. And it's always fun to see here at Wesleyan on homecoming week uh, the buzz that it's going around campus. I know I drove around the entire campus for about 10 minutes just trying to find a parking spot. And I created one. You created one? <laughs> Our usual spots were overtaken by some tailgaters. And of course, I had to park about a block or two away. It's a big drive for Concordia here. They need to find some sort of an answer to get some points on the board. Here's Collins. Had a zigzag through the middle of the line to Create some room for himself, and Bricker's there to make the tackle for Nebraska Wesley, and him and Betcher nice over there on the play. The well, that's exactly and what he did. He zigzagged back and forth, go. back again, able to weave his way through there. But plenty of time here. Neither Concordia doesn't need to panic. They can just do what they do. Thomas, it's incomplete. Seth Wardine with coverage on Audie. Betcher over there, too, for Wesleyan. On the play by but the guy that's really stepped up today in that linebacker spot in place of Wardeen has been Brandon McGill. Yeah, McGill's had a solid afternoon. And when you lose your leading tackler on your team, Vandenberg, as he went down earlier this week, I mean, that's a big hole to fill. Vandenberg, and, and he's one of the leaders out there. And you hope that he's going to be okay, but, you know, with just a few games left in the season, you know, things could look pretty grim for him in terms of that knee injury. And Brandon McGill 
Wraps up and again. tackles Von Thomas and that's again. That's an easy thing to do in the open field. I mean, that's a quarterback draw that could have went for 15 or 20, but McGill, McGill, good, sure tackle, wraps up, doesn't try to arm tackle or just bump him to the ground. He wraps up, and Thomas is the kind of guy that you have to do that to. I mean, if you don't, he'll get free on you. Thomas, not a not a small guy either, 6'2", 190. And he's shifty and a good job here. Third and caught a long five, a, a big third down in this football game. Thomas looking to throw completion made far side of the field. And it's Riley Heron who makes the catch and gets the first down for Concordia. Well, it almost seems, I mean, Concordia is very confident in that short passing game. That third and five there, that's a big play. But Thomas, cool, calm back there. Finds Herring. Now here a quick snap, trying to get something going in a tempo. Collins again, right through the middle, and Riley Shoemaker is there to help out, make the stop. How to pick up a almost, eight on the play, yeah, almost I mean, nine. That's, that's just Everybody tough runners. running, and he struggled. They only had 49 yards rushing in the first half. Their ground game picking up two. Yeah, 120. Collins. Trying to work to the edge. Gets the first down as he gets to the 40-yard line. Collins Brandon McGill makes the tackle again. By Brandon McGill. Yeah, so after only 49 yards on the ground, 39 yards, they've put up almost 100 yards here in the second half rushing the football. But the thing is, they've got into that red zone and stalled out. All they've been able to show for it is a field goal. Swings it to the far side. And the catch made again by Riley Heron. Wow, and pressure was coming that time. Thomas able to rifle that one over there. I'm not sure how Thomas he got that one delivered without it Tackle getting knocked down Richards. or him getting knocked down. Second in the yard, draw play. And Thomas going to break free, wide open into the end zone. And that is what I've been waiting for all afternoon, Thomas to uncork one. And Nebraska Wesley has done such a good job, and it looked like they had him bottled up at the line of scrimmage, and then somehow he broke a tackle and scored it free. Take a look. They take Collins. It's right through there. So Collins... That's that zone read. And look there, there's two hats on Collins and Thomas able to find his way into the end zone for six. So the point after here for My Rose. Here's the kick right down the middle. It's up and good. 9.54 to go. Concordia strikes back, and they take the lead for the first time this afternoon. They lead it 24-20 over Wesleyan on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. My first exposure to agriculture was my grandpa's farm. I just had a passion for it from the beginning. The hard work wasn't just talked about when we were growing up. It was done. The animals had to be taken care of. There's a pride in being able to say, those are our livestock. We know we're young, but Union Bank has given us a chance. We want to leave our son in the legacy of family working together and working hard. Anything can be a lot of work, but when you find a passion, it's not near as hard. 24-20, Concordia leading Nebraska Wesleyan with 9.54 to go in the game. The Bulldogs have rallied. And now it's time for Wesleyan to, you know, kind of rethink things here and decide, okay, what should we try to go with here in this next drive? Well, I mean, Concordia, the, the Wesleyan defense had just done a, a good job of just keeping them off the scoreboard and out of the end zone. I mean, Concordia had been putting a few drives together, but Wesleyan was able to step up at big times and make the appropriate plays, but that time just unable to... Keep Thomas out of the end zone on the big scamper. And Myros with the kick. Schneider gets it at the three. Flag thrown. Going to be a block in the back. More than likely against Wesleyan. 
The flags we have seen, we've seen a lot on Kicker's either punts and Ryan kicks. Schneider. A lot of blocking the backs on both Kansas. teams here. Concordia's had a couple drives start a little further There's back. There's a flag on the play. Blocking the back, Nebraska Wesleyan. 10 yard penalty from the spot. First down, half the distance to the goal. So this will come back to the six of Wesleyan. So now you got 94 yards to work with. And we've seen Wesleyan in situations like this rely on more of a passing scheme where they go to the outside routes. Well, they went maybe a little conservative last drive. This time, let's see if they go to the air a little more. And now Corey Jones, who bobbled the ball and finally made the catch. Let's see where they give the four progress to him. They'll give it to him to the 10. Tackled by Terrence Roby. About a three and a half to four yard pickup on the play. First catch of the afternoon for Corey Jones. 20th completion by Francis. He's still completing two thirds of his passes, 66.7%, 20 out of 30. Pretty good numbers on the afternoon for Francis. Weedle gets the carry, tries to push his way through, gets to the 14 yard line. He's about two short. Now uh, the first down. Weedle with the carry. Tackled by 98, Alex Malayas. And they're going to say he's about three to four short. And just shy of the 19, right at the 19-yard line. Or excuse me, the 14, it looks 14. like. It's 14. Third and four. Francis going to spread it out. Watch the back out of the backfield here. Put him in motion. Near side looking for Jones, and it's almost intercepted, but it's knocked out of bounds incomplete by Olke. And now that momentum has shifted away from, from Nebraska Wesley to Concordia, and it's been some big plays that have made a big difference. there on the coverage as well. He came, he was underneath, and then Olke over the top. Not an easy place to punt from when you're standing in your own end zone. But at this point, if you're Concordia, we saw it last week. Doan had a costly, or Nebraska Wesley did a costly penalty that gave Doan a first down after kicking out of their own zone. A high punt. On the return, it's Harrison. And all the way down to the Wesley in 42. Nice return by Harrison, the freshman standing in there. Making the first man miss. Still some time left here with 8.06 to play, Lucas. And, you know, Concordia, Concordia can't rest just yet, even though they're up by four. Wesleyan, if they get the ball back, has some time to work with. Well, and that's the thing. Concordia's got to feel good. Their rushing attack has kind of been coming alive here the last two or three drives. So if they can keep it on the ground, move the ball forward, at least tack on a field goal here to make it a, a you know, a seven point game so they got to at least kick that extra point or decide to go for two down the road they can ground it run some time off that clock here with both teams one time out for concordia two for wesleyan yet thomas will keep faked it on a sweep play kind of a zone read set up as david jennings well, makes the tackle at the 37 jennings. yard line but it's that same zone read lucas that led to their Go ahead, touchdown here on their last possession. Yeah, and it, you know you, he's given it to Tom or uh, Collins so many times that you almost kind of forget about him as an option. And then those few times he keeps it, he can go the distance on you. Collins runs into Hunter Hand. That's a good solid fill there. That by was Hunter a big Hand. tackle there from Hunter Hand. About a one-yard oh, gain to the, the 36. Carry. Double team by Hunter Hand and Sean Lindgren. Not quite in panic, panic mode yet, as you see Hunter Hand helping with the stop. Seth Lindgren had a hand on that yeah, too. Lindgren shed his block, did a nice job slowing down Collins, forcing him to the outside. Won't be surprised, even on, I know it's only third and five, but if they take a shot to Garcia here. Nope. 
Thomas breaks free, and it's a foot race, and he's going to be tripped up short of the goal line. And Riley Shoemaker, Shoemaker, Shoemaker was the guy that made the touchdown the saving tackle. Three, Shoemaker, Shoemaker with the shoelace tackle right there. Thomas was going to take it in one more time. And after he gets through that first wave, I mean, Thomas has some jets, and he pulls it there. Just yanked the string on him, did Shoemaker. So first and goal from the Wesleyan two. But this is working. Corey has kind of shot themselves in the foot. They've had some false starts, some holds. They had a touchdown call back on a block in the back. Thomas tries Second to force effort. his way through. He still tries to get it in the end zone, and he's going to be stopped short. He is going to be right outside the goal line. Second and goal coming up. And it looked like it was maybe going to be a loss on the play first. Good penetration by the D-line, but that because second effort by Thomas. Thomas Hunter Hand was right there, and I thought he might have stopped him. But there was about a foot and a half. Take a look at this again. Right there, Hand. Yeah, he had him, but then he got out of it. And Thomas did a good job wrapping up that football on that sep second effort. Second and goal. And off goes to Collins. He goes nowhere. And Betcher and Phil Latimer, both of them there to make the stop. Again, this is where that pistol formation. You no, know, you're a foot and a half from the end zone, but you're handing it off five yards Phil behind Latimer. the line of scrimmage. Now it's third and goal from back at the four. So there's some breathing room, but not much. A big third down. And a touchdown compared to a field goal here is huge for Concordia. Clock rolling, almost five minutes here. That pistol set up again. Rolling left. Thomas looking in toward the end zone. Catch made. Touchdown, Concordia. And doesn't Thomas just look cool under pressure back there? I mean, that's that's a huge play right there and just cools the other side of the pillow for Vaughn Thomas. Like it's nothing else going on. Clinton Gardles was the guy that made the catch. Pass was hauled in by Clinton Gardis. Wilcox, Nebraska. So now the point after coming up from Adam Myros. It's a 30 to 20 lead here for Concordia. We Here's the extra point attempt. It is up. And it is good. Just under five minutes to go. Here at Able Stadium on Nebraska Wesleyan's homecoming, and Concordia has Scored two unanswered touchdowns. 31-20 Bulldogs on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Oh, hi there. Sorry, couldn't see you at first. I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy, and it's first filter Friday, so I'm just checking my furnace filter here. Looks like it's about time for a clean one, which I just happen to have right here. You know, a small investment today can really reduce your heating costs and improve your efficiency. You can really see the savings. Yeah? <laughs> For more tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. We will see you next time. Just under five minutes to go here at uh, Homecoming at Able Stadium. Concordia has responded with a 31 to 20 lead now over Nebraska Wesleyan. And one big difference, and we'll bring Corey Ross into the conversation too. The big difference in this second half has been the rushing from Concordia. Yeah, they were held to 39 yards at the beginning of the or in the first half. In this second half, now they have over almost 200 yards. And Von Thomas and Bryce Collins both almost right at 100 yards for the game. What's been the difference down there, Corey, that you've seen with Concordia running the football in the second half? Well, they've they've been running the, this read option uh, a run, and what's going on is the quarter the defense is overflowing to one side, and and. The quarterback, Von Thomas, is just doing a great job at cutting all the way back to the backside where there's no help. I mean, and no one's coming out, no one's coming from that flow because they're flowing to the to the uh, read option side. And wow, he's cutting back perfectly. I mean, I just I just overheard the uh, defensive coaches kind of explaining that's what's going on as well. He's cutting all the way back, and they they have no answer for that right now. 
Well, that's definitely been the difference this second half. Thanks for that, Corey, down there on the sidelines. And you see, that was the stat that jumped out of me at halftime was how well Nebraska Wesleyan was holding this Concordia rushing attack yeah. in check because they averaged 222 yards a game and held them to just 39 in that first half. But like I say, some big runs from Von Thomas, and that's made the difference. Francis to the near side to Ryan Larson intended for him incomplete. Deep coverage there from Matt Keener. Wesleyan led 17 to 14. Tacked on a 30 yard field goal. And led 20 to 17 after Concordia tied it up. Pass on the far side, incomplete. The Kramer field goal from 29 yards out with buck 57 left in the third quarter. And since then, it's the been volleyball match that's here on all Concordia. Opening service at 5 o'clock. The Prairie Wolves will be hosting. Take a look at this South again. Broncos. There's Francis. Right I think maybe at 5 o'clock tonight. Some Prairie Wolves thought maybe a little bit of a hold there or pass interference, but. No flag, just a little incidental contact and brings up a third and ten. They rush Francis. just four. Screen toss, Weedle. Still on his feet, gets the first down. He's hit hard from behind, gets the first down, tackled around the 40-yard line. But again, it's that screen pass over there that's worked. And they only rushed four that time. It wasn't like they ran that into a into a blitz and picked it right. It's just been well executed. And second effort by Weedle gets the first down. Larson Francis trying to dive for it. It goes incomplete. It's been a little long on both that targets to Larson, but rather putting it where only your guy or no one's going to get it than the, the alternative of throwing it short and watching down. it get picked off. That means free chicken for you, but it's only good through tomorrow. So take your ticket to any Lincoln Raisin Canes at 48th and R, 14th and P, or 20th. So 424 to go. Hot, fresh, never ever and the Prairie Wolves, who have had success at home against Concordia, might be on the verge of seeing that success go away. Ball tipped up. Earhart could not reach for it. Almost Francis picked that time by Tate, Sibble. Tate Sybil. And it was off the hands and then... Sybil had a shot at it. Kind of came up on him a little too fast. So a third and ten. Yeah, Nebraska Wesleyan hasn't locked, lost back to back to Concordia since back in 01 02 either. And 02 is the last time Concordia won here at home. Third and ten. Flag thrown. This is going to be a holding call, more than likely. Francis is going to throw it out and goes incomplete. Francis pass is complete to one of the Concordia coaches out of bounds. <laughs> that might have been that might have been Vance Winter that made the catch. Was oh, it was a coach Winter? It might have been. I didn't see who caught it over there. <laughs> <laughs> Watley over there on the PA oh, having a little offense. fun. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. Yeah, boy, Watley, our public address announcer, made reference to. The pass pass going to one of the Concordia, the Concordia coaches. coaches. <laughs> Take, <laughs> Take a look, look here. No, that was, was that, that coach? Was Co the, no, that was Coach Dabrakow, defensive coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> he even got a spike on it afterwards. <laughs> Fourth down here. Francis looking to throw, and it is caught. It looks like. Are they going to mark him down? Yes. That Another diving catch from Connor Zumpf. Zump. And he just has a way of finding the sideline and getting that foot down. I mean, I, I can't say enough about Connor. Look at that. Look, against coverage. I mean, that was good coverage by Roby. Just another day at the office for Connor Zumpf. Francis near side. Larson almost had a one hand grab, but it goes incomplete and a flag thrown. And Matt Keener. Pleading his case, a, saying, what did I do wrong? Malfaction alert. There's a flag on the play. Let's find out what it is. I'm Defensive pass interference, number four, defense. That'll be a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Now, if anything here, Lucas, as we look at this again on the replay, if anything, 
the penalties are going to help Nebraska Wesleyan execute this drive and try to get set up to where they can try to get it in for the score. But let's see how things go as Weedle gets the handoff, and he's going to be taken down for a loss. And that's a big-time tackle there by Michael Gill. Gill, the junior out of Ogallala. As I was saying that, I mean, but, but the thing is, well, that's, that's what's a, hurting Concordia a, defensively. It is, but it's a two-possession game, so Wesleyan has to at least get a field goal here. Wasting no time. Did he make the catch? Yes, he did. Connor yes, Sump again at the five of Concordia. So now the passing routes on the outside are being utilized. And he is tiptoeing that sideline. I mean, Zumpf with nine catches, now 10 catches, I believe, over 150 yards receiving. Wow. Fifth straight game of over 100 yards of receiving for Connor Zumpf. Francis into the end zone. Touchdown to Connor Zumpf. Concordia coaches want the offensive P.I. there. Terrence Roby's pleading his case. I think Zump might have landed on the football there if we made the catch. 11 catches, 171 yards, and a touchdown. So with 3.17 to play, Nebraska Wesleyan scores. And Not they're over with, yet. And they're within five. Now. you got to have the two-point conversion. You here. have to. That way you can get him field goal range again, and I wouldn't be surprised with only two timeouts. Yeah, well, two timeouts, you might, you'll kick it away and see what your defense can do. Big two-point conversion here, though. And it's caught by Ryan Larson, and Keener is still pleading his case, saying that was offensive pass interference, and he is still... Well, I don't know if he thought it was, do you think it was offensive P.I. or that he was out of bounds when he caught it? I mean, either way, Larson well, made a heck of a play Keener, on the football. Keener still voicing his frustration toward the officials as he heads over to the sideline. 3.17 to go, Concordia up by 3, 31-28. You should pick Wesleyan because... It's a school that whatever you want to be in life, you can certainly do it. I wanted a small school, small campus, where I could be one-on-one -on -one with my professors. It's just like one big family, not to mention the, the kind of education she gets is wonderful. I didn't apply to any of the schools. I know Wesleyan was the one that I wanted to come to. We want you to come join us and be part of the Prairie Wolf family and be a part of the tradition of success. This is last week. As Connor Zumpf, that was on the second play of that game against Doan. One of four touchdowns today on for Connor Zumpf that day as he rewrote the record books. Hands team is out there for Concordia. Now watch Concordia. They're waiting for the onside kick. But instead, Kramer Rath going to be... And goes into the end zone for our return man to take a knee for Concordia, so this will be moved up to the 25-yard line automatically. Well, you got two timeouts if you're Nebraska Wesleyan, so you get a stop on first down here, and then uh, you, you can start using your timeouts to get the football back. And this is where your defense really needs to step up. 3.17 to play, Concordia... Ahead and with the ball, 31-28. Now, Concordia, you, you may think, well, couldn't they just start melting away the clock? You know, they got a three-point lead. Not necessarily. You know, you're, you're still at your own 25-yard line. And if you become lackadaisical, you know, that, that'll allow the defense to tune in and, and maybe take control and maybe take away some of that momentum. Well, you got to think they're going to keep it on the ground, at least on first and second down here. And they're going to do it with Collins. Collins gets a couple of yards on the pickup to the 27. Max Lawrence over there the among break. the other defenders He's for Wesley to make the stop. Max Lawrence. Well, they don't use their time out here, so Concordia will be patient with the play clock. Game clock at 2.53 and counting. So they don't have to stamp this ball until about 2, probably 35 and on the game clock. And now they're taking their time. Because Nebraska Wesleyan won't 
use that timeout until they can get a stop here on the second down play. Out of the pistol. It's a keeper by Thomas who dives ahead to the 30. And now Nebraska Wesleyan with those two timeouts will start using them. Lingering in on the tackle that time for the Prairie Wolves. So the Prairie Wolves will burn a timeout with 2.32 to go in the game. Wesleyan trails by three, 31 to 28. You should pick Wesleyan because... It's a school that whatever you want to be in life, you can certainly do it. I wanted a small school, small campus, where I could be one-on-one -on -one with my professors. It's just like one big family. Not to mention the, the kind of education she gets is wonderful. I didn't apply to any of the schools. I know Wesleyan was the one that I wanted to come to. We want you to come join us and be part of the Prairie Wolf family and be a part of the tradition of success. 2.32 to go in this one, and what do you think Coach Kroom and company are going to be talking about here? And I want to remind you here, our next broadcast will be coming up in uh, a couple of weeks. Fact, so our next home game will be on November 1st. Big third down here. It's a look for Garcia, but I won't be surprised if they keep it on the ground here. Crowd getting loud here on homecoming. Good crowd on hand this afternoon here at Abel Stadium. And it's a draw play, leapfrog, and it's going to be Thomas who is going to be stopped short by about a yard of well, getting the first it? down. I mean, they moved that pile a few times, this spot. I think he's going to be about a yard shy. The, the way they're marking the football is that he got to the well, 34. Originally, if you looked at the over on the other side, the spot was a heck of a lot better if you're a Concordia fan than it was for a Wesleyan. They're going to mark it at the 34. Another timeout burned by Nebraska Wesleyan. Corey Ross, let's check in with you again. Situations like this, if you're a Concordia, what's the best thing to do here on fourth and short? It's hard. I, I would probably try and come out and try some kind of type of hard count and see what they and, and also see what they line up on defense. But just try some type of hard count. You get it's just too good a field position to go forward. This defensive line, is, uh, as much energy as there will be on this play, will probably be very tough. So if, if you don't get them to jump off sides, I I definitely punt it. You know you have to and, and, and rely on your defense. So Concordia kind of mulling that over right now. Well, it's a great point by Corey. You come out and at least try that because what's the worst that happens here? Although they do bring the punter out right away. I thought maybe they would come out, try a hard count, even take the five-yard penalty if you have to, and then punt it away. But they're going to let Sandy Fisher get in his foot in one here right away. And Wesleyan will have a chance with about two minutes left. 2.24 remaining. Long count more than likely. They're going to punt it. Here's the boot. Nice looking spiral to it. Fair catch going to be signaled by Wardeen at the 28 of Nebraska Wesleyan. So now, 72 yards to go for the Prairie Wolves. A lot of room to work with. You got two minutes and 17 seconds to work with, too. So it's not necessarily a lot of time to try to get the ball downfield. You've got no timeouts remaining. Well, they just went 10 plays, 73 yards in a minute 37. So they have the confidence, they have the momentum right now, but you don't have any timeouts here. And this is where you look to the outside. But look, you have Connor's up, so that's right. kind of the great equalizer. But you, you look yes. for him on the outside to run out of bounds and at least stop the clock to get reset. Francis here on first and 10 to the near side of the field. Larson makes the catch at about the 41. Thrown out of bounds, first down Nebraska Wesleyan. Now you got to hurry up and get set. Matt Keener over there still talking to the official, saying you need to watch for that PI. He's still, he's got to just worry about himself and play play football. Francis, far side of the field, Zumpf, and he lost the ball, goes incomplete. That was the best play that Terrence Roby has made all day Francis over there Johnson in coverage. He's made a couple other decent plays, complete. but this time he actually broke it up and showed the tenacity to not let Zumpf go up and get them. Zumpf's been taking those away all day. 
Throw maybe just a little behind. Had to wait a little bit. Second and ten. Concordia hasn't rushed more than four of the last two plays. Two slot men. Over the middle, Jones with a catch across the 50 at the 48. Plenty of time still. They're going to mark it at the 47. Clock will stop as the chains move. Francis quickly setting up. Another throw to the near side. Larson makes the catch at the 25. Going to be marked out of bounds inside the 25. Let's see where they put the football. Looks like at the 23. Well, this is just like playground football. And now Wesleyan starting to rally. A minute 45 and counting in this game. Concordia defense is on their heels, to say the least. Francis to the near side. Pass is complete to Brooks Earhart inside the 20 at the 18. And now the clock rolls, and really right now maybe that's your friend if you're Nebraska Wesleyan. They'll put Jones on the far side as a receiver. Francis again to the far side, going to air it out towards Zumpf. Did he make the catch? No, incomplete. Francis Roby's got to make sure he gets his head turned, too, and, and find you get, the football. And you got to credit Roby with a good coverage, too, downfield. Playing tight um, on Connor Zumpf. A couple of freshman cornerbacks for Concordia. Granted, you're five games into the season, but you're still a freshman. And this is some big situations. Zumpf at the top of your screen. Third and five. See if they roll coverage that way. Near side, pass, complete. Corey Jones makes the catch. Looks like he got the first down at the 13, but he ran out of bounds. Let's see how close. It may be short. He's about a half a yard short of the first down. So fourth down, Prairie Wolves have got to go for it. He did get out of bounds. At least they have a little bit of time to... But they're going to bring in Kramer Rath. They're going to attempt the field goal. So they're going to go for the tie. Kramer Rath will attempt it from the 21. This will be a 31-yard attempt. Big play. The snap and the hold. The kick is up. Rath got the distance. And it is good, and we are tied. Tied at 31, and Kramer Rath with his third field goal of the afternoon. The Prairie Wolves are back in business, but now Concordia with a minute 11 to get the football downfield. And it's almost like, did you leave them too much time? I mean, you, you take the points whenever you can get them, but now Concordia with a chance, one timeout to work with. I mean, we talked about the kicking woes every game this season, and Kramer Rath, has had three huge field goals. Granted, they haven't been 49 yarders or 50 yarders, but they've been important points for Nebraska Wesleyan. So the Prairie Wolves and the Bulldogs deadlocked at 31. Concordia had a rally in the fourth quarter. Wesleyan has rallied. And there you see one of the band members doing their, their bench press, so to speak. But... I mean, it's put new life into the crowd here this afternoon. Well, in the last two minutes, Nebraska Wesleyan scored 14. Well, technically they scored 15 points unanswered because they went for two, got that. It went from a 10-play, 73-yard drive in 96 seconds. That time, eight plays, 58 yards in a minute six. And he's got to just take a knee here. Collins, boy, he thought about it. Now he takes a knee. And so Concordia will have it at their 25. So a minute 11 to play. Concordia with the ball at their own 25. And that's a lot of time to work with. I mean, they don't have to They have to have a sense of urgency here, but they don't necessarily have to, as you said, be in panic mode or anything. They have one timeout to work with, so they can still hit some routes in the middle of the field as long as they are up and unready and to rock and roll on the placement of the football. First and 10 coming up here for the Bulldogs. Defensive effort here needs to really be in high gear here for this Wesleyan defense. There you see Phil Latimer. One of the three down linemen for Wesleyan. 
Thomas rolling here to the right. Pass on the outside route to Audi is complete to the 33. And they only rushed three that time. Drop eight guys back in coverage. Clock winding down to a minute. Second down and... I'm not sure why the clock's running. I thought he got out of bounds there. I'm not sure either. Maybe he didn't. Under two minutes. I... Out of the pistol, Thomas. Dropping back deep. Pressure's on, short toss. It's dropped by Collins. Well, at that point, the drop, I mean, he wasn't going to get any. Maybe he picks up the first down, but either way, the, at least the clock stopped here for Concordia. Big third down play here, though. It's good coverage downfield. Only, again, rushing the three down linemen. It's one thing we haven't seen here in a while, Jeff, is some overtime football. We'll have to go back and check the last time we saw Wesley in an overtime game here in Lincoln or in the last year or two. Collins with the handoff, and he pinballs his way through that line, gets to the 42-yard line, and a first nice down. The clock stops Perry. with 30 seconds to play That's here in regulation. So as Lucas researches for that. I'll work out of the pistol. Thomas looking to throw. Got a man over here near side diving attempt. Nope, not there incomplete. Audi the intended target. Riley Shoemaker with deep coverage for Wesleyan. No time. Getting short here even with one timeout. Big defensive play here, second and 10 coming up here for Concordia. Play clock down to eight. Thomas looking to throw. Near side goes incomplete. Clock stops with 14 seconds to play. Third and 10 here for Concordia. The last time Nebraska Wesleyan rallied from a fourth quarter deficit was against Briar Cliff up there in Vermillion this year. You know, they trailed 20 to 17 and won that one 38 28. So even this season, not a stranger from coming from behind to pick up that first win. Third and 10 here for Concordia. 14 seconds to play. Five to snap it. Thomas, draw play, spins out of a tackle. Trying to find his way through the middle, and it's going to be... Well, I think Corey's just playing for overtime. Yep. Now. And the clock's going to wind out here as time will expire, and we are going to have the clock stop at one second. Oh, so maybe they'll throw one last Hail Mary here at Concordia. Concordia, last time out of the half. So they'll burn their final time out. Tied at 31, back to Abel Stadium in a moment. My first exposure to agriculture was my grandpa's farm. I just had a passion for it from the beginning. The hard work wasn't just talked about when we were growing up, it was done. The animals had to be taken care of. There's a pride in being able to say, those are our livestock. We know we're young, but Union Bank has given us a chance. We want to leave our son in the legacy of family working together and working hard. Anything can be a lot of work, but when you find a passion, it's not near as hard. One second remains here in regulation. Concordia on fourth down will have the football at their own 47. Well, it's just the time for the Hail Mary here. Last time... If things don't pan out for either team here, last time there was an overtime game for Wesley in 2012 was as close as we could get on the confirmation across the hall from Alex Linden. We'll try and get more on that, but three receivers top side. Time expires. Thomas with the Hail Mary downfield, and it's going to be intercepted by Wardeen, and he will be taken down at the 13-yard line, time runs out, and we're going to go overtime. And so, 
were through regulation through four quarters. And and both like Concordia and Nebraska Wesleyan tied at 31 on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network.